in this presentation on heteroscedasticity, I show a couple of corrections to fix this problem of unequal error variance. And the two are general variance stabilizing transformations of which the logarithmic transformation is uh, an important one. And the other is uh, a generalized least squares approach that's based on what's called weighted least squares. But the one that I'll show in this presentation is the logarithmic transformation, which actually, if I proceed further, there's a couple of these transformations, square root transformation, uh, logarithmic transformation, of course, and reciprocal transformation. In each of these cases, what you transform is the variable you transform is the dependent variable y only and then you regress that transformed y value on x or the various x's that you have and the reason for the log transformations effectiveness is that it compresses the scales in which the variables are measured reducing a tenfold difference as I write here between two values to a twofold difference consider the fact that 80, the value 80 is 10 times the number 8. But the natural log of 80, which is 4.38, is only about twice the size of the natural log of 8, which comes out to be 2.08. And so in, the, um, there in this uh, log transformation, we're going to be transforming just the values of y, and I'm, as I mentioned, regress it on x. And hopefully that's going to um, come up with um, a regression output in which the um, errors are no longer heteroscedastic. Weighted least squares, though, is um, a little bit of um, a bit of a personal judgment in terms of knowing, uh, making an educated guess about what the error variance um, might be, and then we carry out a specific transformation accordingly. In this case, though, if we believe that the error variance is proportional to one of the independent variables, then we can use, as in this example, the square root of that x variable by dividing both sides of the regression equation by the square root of that chosen independent variable. In the case of a two-variable model, or y and x, it's easy because all we have to do is simply divide the values of y by the square root of x and also divide the values of x um, themselves by the square root of, uh, of uh, the values of x. So actually, in this formulation, the only two things that you're really going to be adjusting would be the values of y and the values of x, or as many x's as you have. So you'll have to, so on your spreadsheet, you would simply uh, divide literally the values of y by the square root of each corresponding value of x. But anyhow, uh, going back to the log transformation, Let's go there. All right, this is the regression uh, model right here. And if I go to the spreadsheet, basically this is what you do. You look at the values of y and then you transform them as follows. Like this first observation there is equal ln, open parenthesis. You click on this guy right here, close parenthesis, and that's it. And then you copy down. And then when you go to run your regression, when it prompts you for y, you highlight these uh, values. And then when it prompts you for x, x would be the original values that you have right there. And then you're going to get your regression output. The summary of which? is presented here. The regression is of course statistically significant as we noted earlier and we find that about 86 percent of the variation in y has been explained by x. And so because this is log transformed if you were to use this for prediction purposes this is actually going to be your prediction equation as you know this here is your b0 which is uh, this value right here, plus b1. This is your b1 right here, multiplied by x. So whatever the value of x is, <clears throat> you plug it in here and evaluate this. But you're going to have to take the anti-log of it, because as you know, y is uh, in logarithmic form, the opposite, opposite of natural log, uh, which is log to the base uh, e, is the anti-log. 
So when you do that, it's going to give you the value of y in the um, in the level in the original form. So anyhow, so we have this output, and uh, we are quite happy with what we have achieved. And in fact, if you plot the residuals, you'll see that you no longer have the very discernible. Um, how shall I put it, fanning out of the residuals from the left side to the right side. So it looks a little bit more white noisy right here. So that's pretty much it as far as the log transformation is concerned. I did get excited by also do, looking at a quad, uh, quadratic model, a polynomial to the second degree, and I ran that regression. And of course, it looks good, except that it, it no longer shows um, x1 to be statistically significant. And in any event, the fanning out is uh, quite uh, distinct right here. Why did I do? Uh, sorry, why did I do this? Is because I saw this curvature right here, and I said, well, maybe if I do a, quad a quadratic transformation, I might get rid of this curvature, which I actually did. Look at the uh, look at the residual graph after I have run this. If I go back, this is the original residual graph. So after I did that, it actually killed the uh, curvature, as you can see. So that looks pretty. Um, I also went ahead and did a logarithmic transformation um, on the model, but allowing the curvature term to remain so that I can kill two birds, as it were, with one stone. Now, and also it looks good, except, of course, that after I've done this, I noticed that the uh, coefficient for the curvature term is uh, no longer statistically significant. So I wondered, is you know, after the logarithmic transformation, is it really necessary to leave this uh, quadratic term here? And uh, this is um, my general summary of, 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 all, of all the models I ran. And as you can see, with the uh, logarithmic model allowing the curvature term to stay, the coefficient of determination of 86% is um, identical to what it would be if I did not include the curvature term. And of course, you observed that this coefficient here, anyhow, is not statistically significant. So really, in my view, the best variance stabilizing model is, this, is the uh, logarithmic model that is based on the simple linear model because it is more parsimonious. It gives us the same flavor, as it were, as we would have gotten if we had allowed this guy to stay in the model. So this is what I go with, and this wraps up this uh, presentation.